as you can see there is a guaranteed champion coming fourth of july makes sense it also makes sense that they would make it shemnath i mean um sorry shemnath not the statue of liberty <laughs> where did they get this concept from no i'm just kidding it, it makes total sense right statue of liberty shemnath is actually an awesome champion who who i i personally had and i really liked i really liked shemnath i thought uh shemnath was an interesting character the concept uh conceptually it was it was a great character oh, where's a uh... do i think shemnath just you know i'm gonna answer this question right now do i think shemnath is a great champion do i think it's it's worth pulling 150 shards for the, um as you can see i already have shemnath it depends on who you are right so let's go ahead and jump into the kit real quick and then we could with that context talk about why i'm gonna say what i'm going to say which is pretty much always what i look look at the animations which is pretty much how i what i always say uh, it depends on the account. It always depends on the account and the person, your specific situation. I really like how the animations for this champion move, and then she stops. A1. Attacks twice. Places decrease defense. A2. Transfers all debuffs from this champion to a target enemy, then attacks that enemy three times. First hit increases the duration of all debuffs on the target. Second hit increase or decreases the duration of all buffs on the target also increases the duration of all buffs on this champion after attacking attack based champion this is on a three turn cooldown this hits i do remember this hitting i used to use shamneth quite a bit early in my hydra career when i first started doing hydra and shamneth was able to put in work a really strong uh hitter as well as a you know a debuff manipulator and buff manipulator attacks all enemies this this also hits pretty hard the first hit removes all buffs you got a buff strip on the first hit the second hit ignores 20 percent of the target's defense also a reason why shemnath hits really hard against targets that have no buffs so buff removal then ignores 20 percent of target defense if they have no more buffs three turn cooldown Increases the champion's accuracy by 10 for each buff on each enemy. Increases the champion's crit damage for each debuff on each enemy up to 100%. Awesome champion. I don't think this is an absolute trash champion. I think it's, 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 she's a, she, he, they, it is a great champion if you don't have her. I think that if I didn't have her on this account, I would probably be tempted to go ahead and snag her just conceptually because she's cool do i need her no but i think she's a cool champion she's got some interesting mechanics obviously if you're newer to late game and you don't have this champion and you're struggling in hydra and you have the shards already go ahead and do it i think keep in mind there is also the pack master fusion which i'm still not going for and i won't regret but if you're thinking about doing the Shimnath, or sorry, if you're thinking about doing the Packmaster Fusion, you might want to consider holding off. If you guys have noticed, like the past few events for summoning events, they've really been trying to drain us. They've really been trying to, uh, you know, get pre preemptively get us in the mode of that sunk cost fallacy, where they're like, okay, we're gonna get them to spend all these shards prior to the actual fusion. And then, by the time they get to the fusion, they're going to be bone dry. And they're going to want to uh, go ahead and spend even more. I have some uh, posts. Oh, and, and don't forget, there's a, a new dog apparently coming. That's going to go in sync with Shayek. So, you know, keep that in mind too. But if you don't care about that and, you know, you, you don't really mind any of it, then go ahead and... You know, go ahead and pull for Shemnath if you if you want to. I don't think you would be sad if you missed out on this champion. It's a solid champion. Not just because she's made out of stone, but it's a pretty good champion to have. Rated pretty highly here on um, Hell Hades website. See? Godlike damage, great uh, decreased defense, protection and support is legendary. Arena 
not my favorite personally, but if you have nobody else, sure. The dungeons early on, Hydra, really good in Hydra. Clan boss can help. Now, somebody on Reddit posted, will you be pulling 150 ancient shards for Shemnath? Let's see what the community has to say. No, 182 people voted. 155 said no. I said undecided, just to not skew the yes or no section. But let's go ahead and see what people say. Spudzy J, the original poster says, I feel like there are a large contingent of late to end game players and even sub mid game players consistently waiting for the ever elusive ancient or sacred guaranteed events. Again, this is kind of true. So if you're sitting on a bunch of ancient shards hoping for a guaranteed, like I said, it, it might be a little bit before they do another 150 blues for a guaranteed champion. Guaranteed champions, if you're just straight looking for lightning, is probably going to be the most efficient way to ensure that you get what you're looking for. Especially if you're if you don't have a good roster and you're still building your roster, yeah, go ahead and scoop it up. But if you're end game and you're like me who can do everything, you won't be missing out, but also it'd be pretty cool to have a Shemnath. You know what I mean? So it's all uh, personal prerogative by the end game. Well, we finally got one and it's pretty damn mediocre. That's true, kind of. I feel like mediocre is a C. I'd say she's a solid B plus A minus almost. The champion is, isn't bad. Yeah, the champ isn't bad, but the problem is that no late or end game players will have real use. That's true. Early to mid game players are likely to have the shards to do it. Maybe, maybe. Early, I don't think early game players are going to be doing UNM and having a consistent, uh, you know, stream of shards. So unless they're paying for it, I can't see very many players participating except for a couple Ash Ketchums. There you go. Just pulled her from 40 Ancients on the 2x was okay. So 150 would would feel pants. Talking myself into it overlaps with the summon rush. Could be doing it anyway. That's true. Gets me a Knight Rev Faction Guardian. Which, may, which might be a hard carry. Let me, I mean, I'd still have to get one more. So if you're already going to be summoning, might as well go ahead and take another Shemnath or take a Shemnath in general. I got two, got no use, no shards. Otherwise I would, very solid champion. Boozer, so far I am the only Ash Ketchum out of 37 votes. I burned most of my ancients earlier, but with the backup plan of spending some gems to make up the difference in case a good guaranteed would drop. I could get the shards for it, but don't feel she's worth the cost. I like her visual design though, but I won't go for her that alone. That's a good point. That's that's enough to make me, uh, you know, sway in the other directions. Because, you know, I've been saving my shards for a long time. And half of it is not because I, I want to save my shards. A good portion of why I'm saving, I've am saving i been saving my shards is there's, there's nothing for me to do. There's no reason to pull new champions. So... It, you know what I mean? There's no reason for me to go for any champions, so I haven't been pulling any shards. I haven't been doing any infusions. Never pulled her. Probably grab her. Vault her. Gotta catch them all. It would be 30 accuracy and resist for all my Knight Revenant champs. I already have three of her. Fourth as a faction guardian would give me blah, 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 blah. Uh, Summer Rush guarantee for 160 Ancients still, still means more Legos on average than a 2x event. Yeah. Especially since I use Narcissus and Encora a lot. What is this? Average long-term rate to pull a legendary. This isn't a doggo. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Oh my gosh. If you guys watch The Office, I love The Office. I think there isn't a doggo with the new patch or some else or some CC would test it with the fusion. Would expect it to be more of a path of or deck of since it's a waste of resources. Yeah, it wastes a lot more resources if you do the path of or deck event. Especially anything related to soul summoning summoning. I'd rather waste 150 not getting nut A reminder for you of those of you who want to pull for this It's almost certain that a summon rush will start on Friday. So wait a day to pull your yeah, it's a five-day event All the months waiting for a guaranteed just to get this Yeah, I feel that Yucky, I have two and never even once thought of using her like I said she was good early on but if you're late to end game Late game's kind of, you know, it depends on the account, but yeah, end game, probably not. Her A3 is solid, to be frank. I've had it ripped through a few areas with ease, true. 
She's particularly good for stage 21. A faction wars, her A3 helps a lot against the Valkyries, her A2 against the bosses. Not worth 150 Ancient Shards for most players, but for players who just have to finish Faction Wars to get Lydia, it might be worth it. She's not bad at all. Interesting kit, good multipliers, underrated. I say this having almost every champion uh, champion in my roster still use, uh, use her in, in Faction Wars. Note for all the people shocked that this champ is up tomorrow, it's 4th of July. We're American. Where America pretends it didn't discard those words on the poem beneath the statue that Shemnath was based on. What? The skill names are fitting. The skill names are fitting? Uh, bring to Ruin. Karyatid's Curse. Humbled and Broken. Mana Seeker. Mana Seeker. Really weird choice for a guaranteed. Not really. It's the 4th of July. Tough call. This champ uh, isn't really anything to write home about, but this guaranteed event will be during a summon rush for the new fusion, so we'll have to pull shards regardless if actually going for the fusion. Additionally, since we've already had 2x Ancients recently, grabbing the Guaranteed Champ can be a good setup for the next 1 plus 1 event if the first 149 shards don't yield a Legendary. True, because you can position yourself well. The way I like to look at it, if you're pulling Ancients or pulling any shards and you don't end up pulling anything, is you're just one step closer to Mercy. That's what I, that's what I think of. Uh, Shemnath will have use in Cursed City, yeah, not a total waste, that's true. But the question for me is whether to pull Ancients or stick to my regular plan of 3k mystery shards to come dear that's a that's a time sink. To complete the summon rush for the fusion, also worried that the overlap of the summon rush will give Polarium to inflate summon rush point requirements. That's true, they could do that. Pulling Ancients during a summon rush speaks more than pulling for it. Trying to understand your comment about setting up for the next, um, I just explained it, so I'm not going to. Vault Queen. Sad she's one of the coolest looking champs. That's true. Would recommend against burning shards together, if I'm completely honest. Such a bad choice for a guaranteed. Humbled and broken by this news. So yeah, it seems like the community sentiment is that a lot of people aren't really too impressed and probably not going to want to uh, pull for her. She trash. She is not trash.